class, Mrs. Boyd live here, and I want you guys to make sure you have your notebook out today. Look at mine, it has all kinds of stickers all over it. Nice, huh? And make sure you have a pencil, take really good notes today. Dalton's gonna be talking to you guys about markets, and we had a content request from Maxwell, wanting to learn a little bit more about the stock market, when Hal was holding a book the other day about the stock market, and it, it sort of piqued your curiosity. So, hey, let's learn something new today. Here we go. Just a quick disclaimer. I'm not a certified financial planner. I haven't taken any of the CFAs and anything you hear in this video is not financial advice and you definitely shouldn't treat it as such. All right, today we're gonna do a very basic introduction to what the stock market is and what stocks are. A stock is essentially an ownership stake in a company. So if a company issues 10 shares, a single share would be worth most likely a 10th of the company. And so the stock market itself is a way that individual investors can own tangible pieces of larger companies. And most companies have millions of shares of stock, so any given share won't, or any given stock won't be worth that much of the company but it is a way for normal people to actually be invested in the profits of companies themselves. The reason stocks exist at all is because oftentimes companies don't have money today to do what they might want to. And so they're left with two options. One is borrowing money. We call that debt. The other is money through equity or stock, which is basically they sell part of their company in exchange for money so they can do more things today. And the way they do that is because a stock price itself is actually determined by an investor's expectations of the future value of a company. So if I think a company is going to be worth a lot of money a few years from now, then it's already going to be worth a lot of money today on the stock market because investors place bets on the success of companies in the future. So if I have a startup that has a really great idea, but I'm not making a lot of money today, it might be smart for me to issue stock so that I can get money today in exchange for that future value of my company that investors might agree with. If that went a little bit over your head, that's fine. We'll step back and just ask ourselves, what does a single stock mean? So a stock itself is essentially just worth a part of the company's total value. So if you have 10 stocks and your company is worth $100, then each stock will be worth $10. And theoretically, that's actually how investors themselves determine what they're willing to pay and what they're willing to sell a stock for, is you take the value of a company and divide it by the number of shares that exist. In reality, the value of a company is very complex to calculate because you can't really tell exactly how a company is going to do into the future. The other problem we end up with is that money tomorrow is worth less to investors than money today because if they invested it in secure assets like just a bank account that collects interest, the money becomes worth more because it accrues interest. So if you can make me $10 five years from now, it's going to be worth less than $10 to me today because I could do better things with that money than wait five years to get it. But once again, that becomes a little bit more complex to calculate. So for the rest of the video today, we're going to assume that investors know how much money a business is going to make and we're going to assume that money in the future is worth the same as money today, but know that these assumptions are never true. And so take it with a grain of salt. In reality, the way the price of a stock is determined, so how it actually functions, is just the price that investors are willing to buy and sell stocks for. You have to have someone willing to sell at that price and you have to have someone willing to buy at that price and that's how the transaction is carried out. So. The price is what investors think the value of a company is divided by the number of shares of that company. So that means if the price of a stock changes, the opinions of investors are changing and what they think of the company is different. So let's say Apple's stock is worth $10 today, but I find out that they've just invented new inventive technology that I think a lot of people are gonna like and a lot of people are going to buy my opinion of the future value of Apple increases. And so the stock price should increase too. 
because investors are going to believe that Apple as a company is worth more money now, that they've created this innovation that's going to make them more money in the future than I previously thought was possible. This leaves another question though. How do investors decide what the value of a company is? In complex jargon, we would say that it's the discounted expected sum of future cash flows. What that means for us today is just how much money the business is going to make over a set period of time or really over time in general. And how we figure that out or how we're going to figure that out today is by looking at something called profit. So we're going to assume today that businesses only sell their goods, they don't reinvest their earnings, and they don't have debt taken out. All we're going to assume a business is, is the goods they sell, the money they make from selling those goods, and the money they spend on producing them. So what is profit? Profit in simple terms is just equal to revenue or the money a business makes minus cost or the revenue a business spends. One way we can calculate this is the number of goods sold times the price times the price of those goods minus the number of goods sold times the cost of those goods minus fixed costs. These could be things like the building that you own, the rents you have to pay, things that you incur costs for no matter how many units you're producing. The costs we're talking about and the cost of a good are the costs associated with the specific production. So in order to better understand the way that stocks are priced, I want to walk through an example with you. So we have a hypothetical company. And remember, a lot of the assumptions I made earlier are holding. So we're not discounting money in the future. We're going to assume that we know exactly the outcomes of a business. We're going to assume that this is the only thing they do and that the whole business is owned by the stock market. So let's say that a business sells 10 pens a year. They charge $3 per pen and it costs them $1 per pen to produce. And I know that the business is going to be around for five years and in the sixth year, it's going to fold. It won't be around anymore. So how do I figure out what the annual profit of this business is? Well, we know earlier that it's the revenue minus the cost. So what's my revenue? I sell pens at $3 and I sell 10 pens a year. So my revenue is just $30 and my costs are $1 per pen times 10 pens. That's $10. So the profit of this business is going to be $20 a year. I also know that the business is going to be around for five years. So the value of the company, because we're not discounting, remember we're assuming money today is worth the same as money tomorrow. I make $20 a year for five years and then I fold. So the value of the company is $100, 20 times five. I also know that there are 10 shares. So if I want to determine what the price of stock in this company should be, I would say that the price is equal to the $100 that the company is worth divided by 10. That leaves us with just $10 per share. And as an investor, if I think a company is worth $100 and I, think there are 10 and I know there are 10 shares, then I'm only going to be willing to pay $10 for stock in that company. And I'm also going to sell for anything above $10. So what happens if investors' opinions of this company change? Let's say now investors get news that pens are gonna be really popular in the future. And we actually think that in the last two years of the company's existence, in years four and five, they're gonna be able to charge $4 per pen. Notice early on, this doesn't affect their sales this year. They're still gonna make $20 this year. I think in the future, they'll be able to make more money. So in years four and five, now instead of 30 minus 10, if they're selling pens at $4, they're gonna be making 40 minus 10 is $30. So now I have that the value of that company is going to be the sum of 20 in the first three years plus 30 in the last two years, is $120. There's still 10 shares. So now the price of a stock should be $12, which means if I think three years from now, the business will do better, then I'm willing to pay more for a share of that company today. This is one of the values of the stock market. 
We allow current events that might affect future business to dictate the price of things today instead of just sales in this year, which wouldn't give you a complete picture of the value of this company. Something else that's important about stock market that I want to add to our example is that a lot of this is a guessing game. Remember what I said earlier. We don't actually know what the value of any company is going to be. We're just going off of the expectations of different investors or their own predictions. So we deal with a lot of uncertainty. So let's say that investors learn that there is a chance that this business goes bankrupt in year four instead of year six. So now the business, let's say 50% of the time, the business will only be around for three years. Maybe they can't make it through sales at $3 per pen. It's not going to work. So they're going to fold after three years, 50% of the time. But 50% of the time, they're going to be able to last for seven years. And remember, starting in year four, they're able to sell pens for $4. So now we have uncertain outcomes. We don't actually know what's going to happen to this business. What is the price of a stock then? Well, we're going to calculate the expected value of the company, which means we're going to say that half of the time, this company is going to be worth those $20 over just three years is 60. And half of the time, the company is going to be worth, remember earlier, the first three years is 60. And then now we're giving them to year seven. So we're giving them four extra years where they're making $30 a year. So that's going to be another $120, four times 30, plus that 60 gives us $180 is how much that company is worth the other half of the time. So the expected value of the company is half of the first outcome plus half of the second outcome. So it's going to be $120. In this case, the price of the stock, the price of the stock is still going to be $12 in this case. But notice something here. If these outcomes are right, if the business does end up folding after three years, the investors who bought this stock lose out because the stock was actually only supposed to be worth $6. And so after the third year, they're not going to get the value they expected out of the business. But if this world is correct, in the other half of the time, and it's actually worth $180, which would be $18 a share, then the investors win. This is something that we call risk. And different investors have different opinions about whether they like risk or how much risk they like. And you build your portfolio so that you can maximize your earnings, which means you want some risk because the sure investments aren't going to make you anything. Remember the earlier question? If we know the business makes $20 a year and we know it's around for only five years, we know the stock is worth $10, but that price isn't going to change. We know what it's worth. And so investors can't make anything without risk. In the world with risk, you can profit off of being right and guessing that the business is going to succeed, or you can lose off of being wrong and guessing that the business is going to succeed when it actually ends up failing. And that's how people actually make money off of investments in the stock market. So hopefully this gives you a little bit better of an idea of how stocks are priced and what that value actually means and also how investors make money off of the stock market. Thanks. No, why does it have to end?